Hi, I'm Bart Hansen, the owner and operator of CrushLivePoker.com. The following hand comes from our call-in show that we record at 4.45 p.m. Pacific Time every Monday. If you want to call in your hand, check out the phone number in the description. Um, there are several limpers, uh, and I wake up, and I'm sitting in the, uh, the hijacker cutoff, the later position, when I uh, wake up with kings. And so I raise it to uh, 25. I think it could have been sized a little higher, but I raise it to 25, which is pretty standard. But I mean, I just think I could have added a couple of big blinds to that based on the amount of limpers. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's that seems pretty small because I mean, I know people open. Well, it is a 500 cap game, so maybe the open's a little bit smaller. But people open to 20 in that game, and you said there's probably three limpers, so I would tend to make it 30 or 35. Yeah, for um, sure. For sure. So this is the two to five hundred game you're playing, right? Two five. That's correct. Okay. Yes, it is. Yep. All right. So I get uh, old man to the left calls uh, on the button. Uh, MP1 calls and MP3 calls. So we are going four ways into a hundred dollar pot by the way whatever happens here i don't envy you and what i mean by this is that sometimes when i talk about these capped games like commerce has a similar structure huh. there's just like a whole lot there's not a whole lot you can do once you get into these situations this is one of people talk about how i said live poker is a little bit different in terms of blinds because here right. first of all most people are going to raise it larger you actually made it kind of small but say you had made it 35 right and the same action had happened you know, three limpers, you make it 35 with kings at a 500 cap game, right? You get three callers. So now the pot's like $150, right? Four times 35. You've got like 450 left in your stack. Like you're going to be faced with a flop decision basically all in. And if somebody just calls your flop back and they're slow playing and they get in on you on the turn, there's really not much you can do. So totally. Totally. You know, and, when and you open to like, like six or seven X and rightly so in these in these hundred BB cap games, people just don't understand like how shallow the spot is. And that's why I feel like sometimes you can have more swings in these one hundred BB cap games with the um the multi handed nature and also just the standard open size. It's just really, really difficult. But anyways, go to the flop here. For sure. Okay, we go four of diamonds, eight of hearts, nine of hearts. Four diamonds, eight of hearts, nine of hearts. Okay. I am holding a king of hearts. Okay. MP1 leads for 65. MP1, who was one of the limpers, leads for 65. Okay. Correct. Limp caller goes for 65. Uh, a little bit of a surprising bet. He's, he's definitely a more thinking player. He's a decent regular. Um, MP3, to my immediately right... Flat calls it. Uh, uh, okay. So it's already getting kind of like, you know, retarded. And uh, I mean, he's got like nothing left uh, at this point. Uh, oh, he's short, this guy? I, he's short? The guy to your right is short? Yeah, he's the shortest. Actually. Okay. I think he started the hand with, um, with like just over 200. So um, so now I... Uh, I definitely made a mistake here um and i don't have an explanation for it but i just flatted which is it's i mean that's always a raise correct i mean it's tough to say always and like i said like i haven't been put in these spots in these games like in a long time um i i would think there's probably nothing wrong with just getting it in here just raising right and the reason why i say that well, I mean, there's certain things that you can happen. Like if you went like 175 and then the OMC like shoved the button, maybe you could make a case for folding. But when you look at a guy who donk leads, this is my thinking in this hand. A guy who donk leads, typically people at this level aren't going to be fast playing strong hands. Um, mm -hmm. Eight, nine, pocket fours. He might raise with pocket eights and pocket nines pre-flop. And then once the shorty just calls, the shorty, if he flops something like strong and he's short, he, 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 he just wants to get it in. He doesn't want to have somebody like suck out on him. So I think you're ahead of the. I'm. I think you're confidently ahead of the two people here. The question I then agree. becomes. I agree. The question just then becomes like, you know, what's the best way to play this hand, and what happens when somebody, you know, to your left puts some sort of pressure on you if you raise. Um, right. 
but I would typically, yeah, I would typically make this like maybe 150 to 175, depending on what you thought the leader's range was uh, in the field. But I, I do think I would raise here with these stacks and this, and the, given this scenario. So, but you end up calling. I do, yeah. And I think that the leader and my, my instinct at the time told me that the leader, I mean, I, he's not, he's not, he's I, like, I've, I don't think I've ever seen somebody lead a set in this game right, like right. i think he's i think he's check raising a set all day long like potentially leading a two pair just like protecting a top pair so i'm not really super concerned but i flat i should have raised flatted uh and the button just flat as well so that's the other thing too about raising is that again i don't know how often people are are actually paying attention to the pot odds in these games but i mean 65 65 call i mean 200 i mean the guy is getting like almost five or six to one on his money um you know with a flat here so he can actually peel with quite a wide variety of hands i mean he could even peel with a hand like ace eight as crazy as that sounds just because so i mean the, he could be very very wide with um because of pot odds now i'm not saying that he's yeah. going to be that way but anyways he flats right yeah, he's flat. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. flat. So, um, you know, I, at this point, I'm just okay. Let's evaluate the turn card. So many bad cards can come for me, and uh, the turn card comes a, um, a queen of clubs. Okay, so one of the straight draws gets there with with Jack Ten, right? Correct. Jack Ten gets there. Um, so the pot's like four hundred bucks. I I I'm doing the math. I think the pot's somewhere around four hundred bucks, and like you have like three sixty. Yeah. Okay. It's three sixty, and I've got four seventy five okay. remaining at this time. Yeah. So, so MP1 goes ahead and leads again for, uh, I, I want to say like 220, right? Um, and MP3 calls, and that puts him all in. So, we'll so he's probably he's called for less, right? Oh, yeah. He's called for like half of that at the most. Yeah. Okay. We'll yeah. call it half when we do the graphics here. So we'll say that he calls for like 110. We can, yeah, okay. Yeah. So now like now I'm in a totally sticky spot. Um, and I'm, and I'm kind of, uh, you know, obviously you know, I think my next move is to shove or fold. Um, and there's still the guy um, behind me left to act and he's, he's short too. He probably has 250 left. So, um, I kind of thought, okay. I mean, if this guy has Jack 10 and led a Jack 10 offsuit, uh, on the flop and then hit it magically or or maybe he has some crazy combo draw you know you say how these guys overvalue these combo draws um you know i, I just kind of thought i'm either i'm either toast or this guy's gonna tank and i'm ahead and maybe he hit that queen with his combo draw Unle i mean the only other thing i can think that he specifically gets there where i'm just crushed is a jack kind of heart specifically um, I got to be honest with you. I I don't like the way that this hand is going here, um, in the in the sense that you you have a situation where this guy leads out for sixty five, right? You get a caller to your right, you call, and now the button calls. We talked about how wide the button can be, right? So three sixty. Now MP one leads for two twenty into three people that called the flop bet. I right. I'm not liking this scenario. Okay. That's a pretty large bet, as some people were saying in the chat, for po for live poker. The other thing is that you now all also have the guy to your right who's now all in. Now, we talked about how I figured the guy to your right might just kind of get it in if he's... I mean, he was sort of, I, I feel like he's probably not going to be flatting with a ton of hands there. I mean, he could with some. Actually, Bart, the, 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 honestly, the guy, like, he's just one of those horrific players. He was from Qatar. Nice guy just literally calls with any piece of it. I really wasn't too concerned about him at all. Actually. No, I, okay, I, I get that, but I mean, even bad players can make hands. What I'm saying is is that you're going to have to overlay the fact that MP that you have MP1 and MP3 beat here, or whoever the guy is to your right, plus you have right. the guy on the button mm -hmm. in the hand as well. I can certainly see folding here um, pretty reasonably. I mean, the thing is is that you've got 470 left in your stack, so... It's probably just a raise or fold now because you're not going to fold. But I can't imagine how folding is going to lose you that much. And I think it's probably the right play. I think it's probably pretty close. And like I said, I'll fully admit I don't have a ton of experience 
playing at this cap level in these multi-way scenarios, but 220 there from MP1 on the turn seems like it's pretty strong, and you're up against three other people that are still in the hand. Um, I mean, so you're... I might in, fold. In that spot, in that spot you're, you're thinking for sure this guy has a Jack-10 type hand, like so, something that two pair or better by now, right? I think that the way that this turn card connects with the board that one of the three players in the hand has you beat. Right. Do you ever, do you ever think, and maybe I leveled myself, like, holy shit, maybe all three of these guys are drawing for, for the same draw and they're all holding each other's, they're blocking, they're all blocking each other and I'm blocking them too with a king of hearts. Do you ever level yourself that way? Well, that's, you're, you're looking at that sort of in the wrong way because... You having the king of hearts is bad because now someone can't have a heart draw. If you didn't have the king of hearts in your hand, there'd be more of a chance mm. than people had draws. Also, too, when's the last time you've seen three people on the same draw? I mean, I used to do live at the bike for 10 years. I've, I've never seen three flushes, I think, on the show at one time. So right. I, th I, I think that's the wrong way to look at leveling. Like, that's okay. – I mean, you could all – there might be more of a chance – the three guys have air here. And what I mean by that is, is that like combinations wise, that could be just a, the, as outlandish as that sounds. Uh -huh. It could, th that probably is just a good, good, good as a proposition as them all having the same draw, three people having the same draw. Right. There's only so many cards in the deck. Plus right. when you have the King of hearts in your hand. Okay. So someone has ace X of hearts. The eight and the nine actually out there for hearts are, is sort of bad because mm -hmm. now you got a scenario where if someone has ace X of hearts, you have king of hearts. What, what are the hands that they can have? What are the other heart draws? People don't really play. I mean, queen three, jack five, jack ten's a straight, right? Mm -hmm. So you start to see mm -hmm. that it's just not a good scenario for you. Yeah, yeah. So what ended up happening? All right, so I decided to go with a shove. Yep. Shove 475 um, and figured if MP1 tanks at all, then I'm ahead. Um, if the button, button calls behind you, you're dead, though. Guess what? Button calls behind me yep. for, you know, 250 or so. Yep. And then it goes back to MP1 who tanks. And, and it's just weird because he's getting such a good price at this point, if he, even if he is behind. But he does tank. And he finally calls, and the river rolls off a deuce of spades. And uh, at showdown, nobody wants to flip their hands, so I table mine. Uh, I think I'm first to go anyway since I shoved, and everybody mucked, and I won. Okay, well, I mean, I, I, I mean, I don't think it's outlandish to get it in there after that, but I still think that it's probably a fold. Um, it's super close, right? I mean, or or is it not? Just based on the multi-way nature, I mean. That's generally a fold, right? I just think that when the guy bets out for that amount into multiple action, you've got an all-in to your right. You still have the button in a hand. You said this OMC, which means he called with something on the flop that you're just going to be behind a lot more often than you're mm -hmm. ahead. And the problem is, is that you have a weird stack size, so you're actually... Um, you're actually... Uh, you know, you're actually having to lay your pro lay a price. Do you see what I'm saying? You're laying mm -hmm. a price because you have to put um um you have to actually put more money into the pot. So, hey guys, if you like what you've seen here, please click on the subscribe button and you'll get notified every time we put up a new video. And if you want to check out CrushLivePoker.com for the first month free, use the code YTA100. Click on the link right there.